I feel like I'm living in the upside down today, and I'll explain why in just a moment. We've got a big show of all my opinions have changed on everything, I think. I think something's going on. Is this April Fool's Day? Is this po post-eclipse? Like, I woke up and chose all different opinions on everything. I think that we should legitimize and give... Um, Give credit to being able to change your mind. I'll explain all about that. We're going to talk about Brittany Cartwright. We're going to talk about Andy Cohen talking about Lala. So a lot of VPR talk. We're going to be talking about a new couple alert in the Jeff Lewis Live universe, a little bit about Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, and more all on today's Daily Dose of Donna. Welcome to the show, everyone. Hope everyone is having a nice day. Yesterday was such a weird show because of the eclipse. I felt like the live audience was quieter than normal. It was definitely less filled because I went live exactly during the eclipse because I just do things like that. No, I go live exactly at the same time every single day. Um, but a lot of you guys couldn't make it live. So a lot of you watched the show afterwards yesterday, and I am happy for that. If you missed yesterday's show, go and check it out just to see my interview with uh, Gabriella and Steven from Vanderpump Villa. They are both the event planners on the show. Um, Gabriella lives in Miami, and Steven is in Vegas. And we talked about crazy manager Eric on the show. We talked about Marciano and his girl, Hannah. We had, we had a lot of conversations about a lot of things. We talked about Lisa Vanderpump, the casting um, experience, et cetera. So it was a really nice conversation with them. They're so sweet and unaffected. It's funny about Vanderpump Villa. I get a lot of messages from you guys about it um, because I I've talked about it now a few times on the show. Some of you guys love the show and some of you guys are finding it really what you consider like a super produced over the top, you know, basically acting show. It's weird. I don't feel that way. I feel like it's definitely overproduced in the sense of like setting up the guests and the shots and everything. Like it has that Netflix Hulu feel. However, the way that the people are acting well, I say acting, but like the way that the cast is is being does not feel fake and like acty at all to me. In fact, I find it like it feels really genuine because most of them have never been on TV before or this is their first show. And so they're kind of just like going through the motions and they don't really know, you know, if people are going to even watch this at the end of the day. So um Interesting. Mark says, I liked it, but episode four didn't light me up. I think I might be wary of this kind of drama. You know, you have to start wondering when you're watching TV shows that just make you feel bad. I don't think Vanderpump Villa is that for me, but there's a lot of episodes of these reality shows that just do get super dark. And if it, I guess if it doesn't light you up, then, you know, you can decide if that's something you want to spend time on. I love a show like Vanderpump Villa Summer House, Summer House, Summer House, Martha's Vineyard, simply like forget the cast, forget what's happening on the show. I just like when it's pretty locations. That's why I like Below Deck too. I just noticed because I was rewatching, um, I watched the Jill Zarin episode of Below Deck and then I got, I kind of got like back into Below Deck. I started to say, why aren't I watching this more, you know, regularly? So then I turned on season eight of Below Deck Med. And I don't know if that's the current season, but it was just the last one that I saw in my, um, like on Peacock or YouTube TV or wherever I was. And I started watching it and they're in Genoa. I could be saying that wrong. I think I'm saying it correctly. Italy. It's so beautiful. It is so stunning just to like, I just want to be there on that dock. I want to sit and have like an al fresco lunch, like a beautiful Branzino with some yummy, bread and butter, a glass of Pinot Grigio, and like look out at that those boats. So I watch it because partially I want to be there. So 
do what, you know what, do what lights you up, guys. You know what lights me up? You guys, you all light me up. And I'll tell you, I got a box yesterday. If you follow me on Instagram or if you're in the Facebook group, um, you'll see my reel that I posted of Anne Marie. Bless Anne Marie from Scotland. She's one of our Patreon members. She is a listener to the show. She's usually here all the time. I think she's on vacation right now, but she sent me a huge box of British and Swedish and Scottish chocolate and candy. And I'm telling you, okay, it was one of the most incredible surprises to get. It was an Easter box. It was filled with things for the kids and things for me. It was just fantastic to open. And I'm wondering if we should do like a live one day where I just like sit here and eat the candy and try it in front of you guys, you know, like you have nothing else to do right? Oh, maybe I'll make it a TikTok series. She's in Florida right now. Thank you. And Wanda, meanwhile, says, we're on family vacay, but nothing can stop me listening for, to Donna's podcast. Hashtag bad mom. Hashtag doser for life. Well, I'll tell you something. You're not a bad mom. You're a good mom. Because good moms prioritize their happiness so that they can then fill up their family's happiness, right? You've all, we've all heard about that. Like you can't fill from an empty cup right? You can't fill from an empty cup. So let me fill your cup. And before we get into today's stories, we've got a few of them. I just want to throw out some of the, some of the sponsors for today's episode. Um, I want to talk about Rowbody. Rowbody provides access to the most popular weight loss shots on the market. For those of you that are interested in trying some sort of a GLP-1 or a semi-glutide, this is a great option for you. The Rowbody program pairs a weekly shot with healthy lifestyle changes so you can lose 15 to 20% of your weight in a year on average and actually keep it off. Over 200,000 people have already chosen Row to help them lose weight. Row Body's program members have support throughout the process and Row's partner handles all of the insurance paperwork to help get your medication covered. Average weight loss is 15 to 20% in one year with healthy lifestyle changes. Go to row.co slash Donna, D-A-N-A. Sign up today and you'll pay just 99 for your first month and 145 month, a month after that. Medication costs are separate. Row.co slash Donna. Okay, so let's get into the first story. This is an interesting story. Um, and and I started the show by saying that I'm I'm changing my I'm changing my opinions about a lot of things. And I think that we should normalize this. There's too many people out there that I feel are, you know, they struggle with just being able to say out loud, like, I changed my mind. It's okay to change your mind. And especially if you are someone that watches a lot of these shows and you go all in, you ride hard for one of the celebrities or one of the shows or one of the characters on a show, or maybe it's a podcaster that you've like, you know, fought their battles online. It's okay to all of a sudden say, hey, hmm not really sure about that. I think I actually disagree with what I thought last year. So let me give you an example. Katie Maloney. Let's talk Katie Maloney. I started to realize something. Katie Maloney was giving me vibes in last week's episode. Yes, she was wearing the most horrendous outfit I've ever seen. That jean jacket just did not work for me. The jean vest. We, ha we have to retire those jean vests, those oversized jean vests. Watch me wear one tomorrow. <laughs> I'm like, guys, we've got to stop with our jean vest. And now I'm going to like sell it as merch. So she, I don't necessarily agree with a lot of her fashion, although she's been looking phenomenal lately and she looked great at the reunion look. But I started to realize that I used to get these kind of ick vibes about Katie. I used to be annoyed by her. I used to think she was really negative and angry. And I don't know if it's just the fact that other people on the show are starting to bother me so much or she's just starting to grow on me like a fungus. But I really actually started to notice like some feelings of, dare I say, like, I like her. Now, I don't like her in a I want to make out with you way, although I do think she looks gorgeous. She looks just like Natalie Imbruglia. Do you guys remember Natalie Imbruglia from um, that song, Torn, with her hair like that? But I think that um, it was something in her warmth with Tom Schwartz. She wasn't being incredibly warm with him like lovey-dovey, 
but there was this playfulness that happened between Tom Schwartz and her that almost was giving like sexual tension. Um, I think Danny Pellegrino even tweeted that on his Twitter, something along those lines of like, am I feeling sexual tension between Katie and Tom? They are, they like, they're a little playful. Maybe it's because she got laid by Max in the episode, right? The night before or two nights before she had that one night stand with Max Boyan. So maybe she was feeling really good about herself. I don't know, but it was a beautiful kind of vibe from Katie. Then I was also thinking about the fact that everyone else on the show is just getting really dirty right now, right? Sheena is Sheenaing herself to all ends of the earth this last episode. And I can't, I can't handle it. Like not this last episode, this season. She's, she just irks me. There's something about every time I hear that clip when she talks about, oh, well, I just found her location. And then, oh, I can't, her voice is, is grating to me right now. Um, Ariana, I still vibe with her, although we've seen a side of her that is kind of like hard to watch. Lala's like really kind of tripping me out from all the comments she's making in the public on her podcast right now. So I feel like everyone around Katie is just giving me such an ick that Katie's just like naturally rising above. She rises above. What song What song was that? I rise above all the hang... I rise above. Who who sang that? Which which housewife sang "Rise Above"? Was it Candace? Like now I can't remember. Um, so she's right. She's rising above. You know they say in, on Easter he has risen. She has risen above. Candy. Okay, Candy sang that. Um, I rise above all the haters. I rise above. You know what? I would love to rise above. <laughs> I'm going to rise above today. So, um, so yeah, I just, I, I don't mind her right now. I don't. And she posted something on her, um, page on Instagram and like, I found myself commenting. Couldn't, I kind of couldn't stop, but I found myself commenting, Katie, I'm, I'm really confused here. I used to, maybe I should sing torn to her. The Natalie Imbruglia song that she looks like. Cause I'm torn. I used to really kind of not like you. And now I like you. So normalize changing your mind. Andy Cohen on his radio Andy show this morning talked about Lala and, um, you know, how he is getting a, a hard time about this one comment that he made that he said Rock and Lala are the Voices of Reason on, hold on, Radio Andy. I want to see if I can just play it for you. I want to see if I can just play the, yeah, I'll just play it for you guys and we'll hear it. We'll listen together as we do on this show. This is what he said about the heat that he's getting about, you know, calling out that Lala and Brock are the voice of the season. It's Vanderpump Rules Night. And I got to tell you, I said something very offhandedly on this broadcast about three weeks ago that has just been clogging up my Twitter timeline ever since, and not in a positive way. And that is that I, I believe that I, again, kind of offhandedly said that Lala and Brock are the voices of reason this season. Well. Wow. People are doubting my sanity. The way they he talks. think I am abs, and they also just think I'm a horrible person for saying so. Let me just say again, I'm enjoying Lala and Brock this season. That's all. Mm -hmm. Voices of Reason is, I, I guess, y'all got me there because. It's a you know, it's a show in which there is maybe not a ton of reason, and maybe that's why we like it. But again, I, I just will say, I'll just say it in a different way. I'm really enjoying Lala and Brock this season. Okay. So he has mentioned that Lala and Brock are the voice of reason, and we've been watching, and I actually kind of was on board 
But I think he's getting a lot of hate right now because she is really going against Ariana in real life, IRL. And so people are saying like, what are you talking about? But there does seem to be kind of like a general feeling of Vanderpump Rules, Bravo, um, you know, Evolution, Alex Baskin. I don't know. They're just, they're all riding hard for Sandy, right? Like they're just going all in on Sandoval. And I think that whatever it is that they're doing is just like, it's really trying to kind of give Sandoval this leg up. And this redemption tour. And we're all finding it on the show that no matter what idiotic things he does, he's being protected in some capacity with the edit. It's making him look better. And yeah, we'll have a moment here where like it talks about Anne cleaning up clothes and shoes and whatever. And actually, this is this is a little bit of a tangent. But assistant Anne... Uh, you guys know my feelings on her. I've talked about it. It's like, okay, if she's a comedian, that's fine. I'm not into the like, sorry, 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 sorry energy. I can't handle that as an assistant. That would kill me. But I was listening. The, now this is like the 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 venting, not the venting, the tangenting of the Vanderpump Rules world. I was listening to a moment of Kristen Doty's podcast um, that she normally does with her boyfriend, Luke, but she was actually with Zach. He's the Lego guy, you know, the the Lego haired guy on Vander on the Valley. And they were talking about being an executive assistant and they were talking, they were breaking down, you know, Vanderpump rules that episode. And Zach was like, I was an executive assistant for so many high level celebrities. And this, you know, cleaning up after them was the least I had to do. You have to do kind of so much of this cleaning up. And then they mentioned, and I think that this is a really valid point, why Tom got mad at Anne or let her go or made her cry or whatever. She was essentially interviewing for another job with Tom's biggest, you know, enemy in his home on like his hours. I have to say, it's it kind of makes sense. So I understand a little bit about that. I'm not like so pro team man on this one. I don't. I don't get it. I would be very annoyed if I was living with my enemy who hated me more than ever. And he was looking, just say it was Lance and he was looking for an assistant and he interviewed my assistant with me upstairs. Like that just feels very weird. Take out like the Tom Sandoval of it all. It's not appropriate. Secondly, um, Back to Lala and Brock, I think that Lala is really, you know, going all in. And she did something on her podcast episode. I don't know if it was this week, last week, who knows, saying, if you are hating on me, like, stop sending me messages. I don't care if you guys out there are hating on me. And a lot of people are like, yeah, right. She totally cares. I actually don't think Lala gives a flying F if the entire world hates her. Because I think she's so smart to know that the more people hate her, that means they're talking about her. It's very Bethany-like. And she wants people to talk about her because it just provides more numbers to her podcast. Every time she goes on a rant like this about Ariana, her numbers explode. There's no question, right? There's no question. Uh, Mark says we're interviewing other podcast hosts in the chat. Yes, yeah, see if you can find anyone, anyone that will show up for you five days a week. and you know, make themselves look like an idiot like me. I mean, I can think of a few, actually. <laughs> Never mind. Stop interviewing them. Because <laughs> I am I guess I'm replaceable. Um, so anyway, so I think that Lala loves the attention she's getting, negative or positive. I don't think she would say anything unless she wanted all this negative attention. She knows the audience is pro Ariana. She knows that she's not pandering to the audience whatsoever. And it's okay. It's just helping her. Trust me, it's just helping her. There is no way that her numbers are less. And I can't stand Lala's comments a lot in the last couple of weeks, but I also really still like Lala. And that's just like a weird dynamic that she has. Also, Brittany talks about this. So let's talk about Brittany really fast. Actually, before we get into that, I want to uh, mention to you that this next story is brought to you by One Skin. One Skin at, um, is an incredible, incredible skin line, moisturizer, eye cream, the whole shebang. They have it all. But what I like about it is that it doesn't have a scent. It's very easy to use and it's based in science. So instead of attacking just your external wrinkles and just kind of 
slapping a product on top to give you a little bit of fake moisture. It's attacking the root causes of aging, and that's through the OSO1 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin, and they've got several studies to back it up. Uh, you guys can get 15% off right now, 15% off your first one skin purchase using the code Daily Dose, one word. So what you have to do is go to oneskin.co and use the code Daily Dose by focusing on the cellular aspects of aging. One skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. So get started today. Use code Daily Dose. And after your purchase, they're going to ask where you heard about me, them. And you got to say Donna. You got to say Daily Dose of Donna. Okay? Just letting you know. Um, thank you, One Skin. All right, Brittany Cartwright. So here's another way I've changed my mind. You guys know I've talked about this for a few days now. Brittany Cartwright, or a few weeks, Brittany Cartwright announces her separation with Jax right when the Valley is gearing up to air. All of a sudden, they're doing these podcasts together. They're being photographed together. There's the story is he's she's living here. No, she's not living here. They're still promoting the show together and like going on all these panels. I'm calling bullshit, right? I'm like, that is bullshit. They are not separated. I think I was wrong. I think I was wrong because Brittany was on Not Skinny But Not Fat, which is a podcast um, by Amanda Hirsch, podcaster. And I listened to it this morning. And I don't listen to, like, I've told you this already, that I don't listen to full episodes of a lot of podcasts just because of time purposes. And sometimes it's like, I get a little nervous that if I listen to someone else, I'm going to just steal their opinions or their thoughts. So I try not to do that. Um, I try to talk about things before I hear other people's opinions about them. But um, this I thought I found myself very interested in this interview as I was making lunches for the boys this morning. So it was just Brittany. I like her without Jax. I like that she's having an ability to kind of just talk on her own. Um, Amanda immediately started asking her about her starting on the show. Now, I had heard that there was a tweet or an Instagram photo that she has since been deleted of Brittany being excited to eat at Sir because of Vanderpump rules but it has since been deleted. So you don't know if she is in fact, like that. those could be fake, right? People could say anything. So I don't know if that's true or not, but she promises, she swears that she never watched Vanderpump Rules before the day she met Jax. She met him in Vegas. Katie and her were actually hanging out before Jax came along and you know, they all started hanging out and then she and Jack started like just spent the entire time in Vegas together. And then, you know how Jack says he falls in love real fast, right? So she is convinced, she is a meat, like she does admit that she has no, she had no interest in being on Vanderpump Rules or being with Jax because of that reason. Whether we can believe that or not, I don't know. She talks about the fact that when she started on the show, when she started showing up on some episodes, which I've been rewatching in season four, she was so shy. She hardly spoke. She just kind of let him be. And that's probably a lot of the reason why Jax was so into her is because she was this really nice, you know, girl with an accent that almost was the most opposite from an LA girl ever, which I thought was actually a really interesting thing. To me now, it just looks like Jax totally needed someone that he could walk all over and take advantage of after dating someone like Astasi who didn't get him, let him get away with shit, right? So then she talks about a lot of things on this episode. One being the fact that, you know, Amanda says, I was rewatching scenes from um, season six. And if you guys remember in season six was the episode where Brittany reads that or like plays the voicemail out loud at that party at one of their apartments. I can't remember. This is when everyone lived in the same building and it was about faith and it was about him hooking up with faith and she played it out loud. and everyone was losing their mind and Jax got really pissed off and went to the other apartment. I think it was Tom and Ariana's apartment, went over there and like, remember he threw a phone and he was like really angry. Well, Amanda mentioned, and I don't remember this that well, that he was able to turn that experience around that early on and make it almost like it was her fault that she played the voicemail. So it's this clear, obvious gaslighting behavior that Jax has had throughout the entire time. And Amanda said, and you forgave him and you gave him another chance and like 
married him. And Brittany was saying, I know, I look back at a lot of the things that I did and I just can't believe I did it. But I I wanted to believe the good in him and I'm a ride or die type of person and I'm very loyal and I really wanted things to work out and he has a really good side of him too. So I kept just kind of going back to that. I think Jax is a manipulative MF. That being said, I'm planning on going to Jax's at some point in the next couple of weeks, but it's, he sounds horrible in this interview, like just from what she was saying about him. So they talked about that whole thing. Then they talked about Stassi and well, a couple of things were brought up. So let's get into like more recent and what's going on with their separation. And I really do believe actually that this happened. We don't know what that final fight was that apparently is what lifted the veil is what she keeps saying. And she says it again in this episode, something lifted the veil for her and she was really able to see clearly what was going on. She says it wasn't infidelity. I don't believe that for a heartbeat, but she says it wasn't infidelity, but something lifted the veil. And I realized right then and there, I needed to get out with Cruz. Why did she get the Airbnb? Amanda asked. It's because Jax is a stubborn POS and he wasn't going to move. Jax wants her to come back into the house and live in the master while he lives in the guest room. She's like, I'm not doing a Tom and Ariana situation. She decided it was better for Cruz, their son, their almost three-year-old son, to not be in the house because he was recognizing and seeing that they were constantly fighting, these two. They were constantly fighting. And so she's just upped and left and went to an Airbnb. She says that she's paying for the Airbnb. Now, I don't know what kind of Airbnb she has, but I know that just from like my research and seeing things that are around, you cannot get like a tiny little apartment here in the Valley for less than maybe $3,000 a month. That's like a shitty one with, you know, no washer dryer. Like if she is living and I don't know where she is, but if she's living in a home and you guys can tell me, maybe she's in a condo or an apartment, but enough that she has a separate re- bedroom for, um, you know, for Cruz. I just can't imagine that she's not paying thousands and thousands, like at least $5,000 a month, at least. And then she says, and paying all the bills back at the house. So Amanda goes, I'm sorry, what? You pay all the bills? And she goes, yes, I pay all the bills. He pays the mortgage and I pay all the bills. And then Amanda says, well, is your is your name on the house? Yes, her name is on the house. And she put down just as much money as Jax did to buy the house, which is pretty surprising, actually, because I didn't realize Brittany even had, you know, a lot of money, but maybe she got help. But the point is they literally, they don't have any, um, she says they have separate money. They pay for everything separately, but she's paying for this Airbnb and all the bills. And like, let me give you an idea of what bills are like in a house like this. Their house is bigger than mine, but we're in the same neighborhood-ish. You know, we both have a pool. So with electricity, with power, with, you know, pool, man, I'm assuming they get the house cleaned, um, gardener, like $2,000 a month in addition. I mean, that's like, it's such an approximate. I have no idea. So she's spending so much money just so that she can separate from him. Why is she separated from him? Because she doesn't want Cruz to see the fighting. She says Cruz is actually thriving. Because I I feel bad saying that, but Cruz is actually thriving that we're not together. And she said, Jax is a really good dad. He's always been a really good father. But I just don't think that Cruz was thriving because all he was seeing was us fighting. I mean, you guys, this is such an obvious they need to break up. If you cannot hang out together without fighting, that's a problem. She even says that later. She says that on, on Easter Sunday, they spent together because there was photos of them going to this restaurant in Malibu together. And she said, oh yeah, we were fighting on the way there. Like we cannot talk without fighting. When we do the podcast, I put my headphones in while we drive to go do the podcast. And then I get there and I do it like a job and put my headphones back in, which is just bananas to me. It's giving Tori and Dean. It's not good. Like now listening to Tori Spelling's podcast and her saying for 15 years, we were unhappy and miserable. And meanwhile, we were watching these shows of them like so in love. It's, it's giving that 
she's being so clear about it. She's like, I don't want to. So, so Amanda said, do you think that you guys are going to want to, you know, make it work? And she goes, well, I love my house. That was her reaction. Well, I love my house. It's not even like faking it. This is why it's so confusing. It feels very clear that she has absolutely no interest in being with him anymore because she's like, she mentioned that he's like kind of funny. He has a really big heart. But for the most part, the entire episode was saying about what a piece of shit he is and how he's ruined so many relationships with her friends. For example, that whole Stassi and Bo thing, they were supposed to go to Stassi and Bo's wedding in Italy and they didn't. And partially it was a passport issue for Cruz, but also it was because Jax was just being a jerk. And she said, I had no idea, but he was sending all these things in these group messages that they were on that were really offensive. Um, she also mentioned the fact that, you know, he is just, she's constantly having to kind of like apologize for him and make up for him and do all these things. Then something was brought up that I thought was really interesting. Kind of recently, someone commented on something that Jax posted. I don't know if Jax posted. Yeah, I think Jax posted it because it said liked by author. And he posted, the comment said, you should have married Stassi. And he liked it. Now, we've all talked about it. Maybe it's the bots, wink, wink. But he clearly liked that comment, whether or not he was reading every one of the comments. Maybe he was just going through and liking everyone. I don't think you can be that stupid and just go through and like all your comments because in this day and age, there's so much hate out there. So that doesn't mean anything. But um, Brittany was like, he did. That's so weird. That's so creepy. They also talked about Cruz and like a little bit of the challenges that they have with the him. He has a little bit of a speech delay. I think this gets brought up on the Valley soon. Maybe this episode. Um, he's in occupational therapy and, you know, speech therapy. And Amanda kind of like talked about the fact that, you know, she had wanted to have another baby and they were talking about getting pregnant again. And maybe a lot of this next thing is about that. Maybe Jax is just not ready to kind of do that. Maybe he just was way too into the bar and way too into fame and way too into all of that so that he wasn't willing to it to get there. I have no idea. It doesn't make any sense to me, but um yeah, we'll have to see. Um you know, I do think that when you have some de delays with kids or with any struggles with kids, I will say this like firsthand and two parents are either not on the same page or one parents differently than the other. Maybe one is more like one maybe is more empathetic towards struggles and then the other one doesn't really understand it or whatever, just depending on how you were raised or what you're going through in your own life, that can definitely cause challenges. And I'm sure most of you guys that are married and with kids, especially young kids, but maybe this is forever. If you parent a little differently, like maybe your husband or your wife is a little more strict than you wanted them to be, or maybe one of them, you know, says things in a, like in a tougher way than maybe you would, or isn't as compassionate as maybe you would. Like, I just think that, um, that's like, that can definitely be a challenge in a marriage. I wonder if they have ever gone to couples therapy. She didn't talk about that today. I just don't think they're, they should be together. I mean, it's very obvious to me that Brittany and Jack shouldn't be together. But she was saying that the bar is doing really well and that it's really great. Although Billy here said that there's a video that Jax was changing Cruz's diaper on the bar over the weekend or last week. And they were kind of like squabbling. Uh, Brittany and him were kind of arguing in front of this. So there's like two things wrong here. Number one, why is a baby in a bar? Number two, why is his diaper getting changed on a bar? And number three, why are we still arguing in front of the baby? Like there's so many things wrong there. Separate like free Britney. This is the new free Britney. Okay, free Britney Cartwright. That's just my opinion. It's my opinion. 
All right. Did you guys hear about what Rihanna said about Kyle Richards? I think, um, oh, she said on Watch What Happens Live that counseling is a condition to get back together. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's see if he'll actually do it. And if he does, we've seen Jackson therapy before, by the way. Jax is the biggest manipulator and he can lie and he can act so well. Well, I think he's kind of bad at it, but like most people can fall for it, I guess. So I can just see him going to therapy and be like, <laughs> and then getting her back and then doing it all again right away. You guys, Rihanna and Kyle Richards, this article cracked me up. Even Rihanna thinks Kyle Richards and Morgan Wade are a couple. I mean, duh, it says. She told Interview Magazine in her spring 2024 cover story published Tuesday when asked if she believes Richards and Wade are romantically involved. She said, listen, I love Kyle. It's weird commenting on her relationship because I don't know the facts. The Housewives super fan continued. I just feel like she was able to reobserve her marriage through a new lens. And then... It says um, she speculated that Morgan Wade made Kyle feel valued and cute and quirky and fun when Richard's estranged husband, Mauricio Umansky, took her for granted. And that's why I believe that there's something with Morgan, Rihanna shared, because sometimes it takes that for you to fight for what you deserve. Um she declined to engage when the interviewer mentioned Alison Dubois, the medium who famously predicted Richard's and Umancy's split on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, and she goes, man, stop. I'm not getting into that, Riri replied, you messy bitch, <laughs> about the interviewer. Um, so here's the thing. I, I, I think it's very... I think it's actually really cute. Number one, I have to say, I think it's actually really cute that Rihanna has like a vested interest in Kyle Richards and Real House as of Beverly Hills. We know that she follows her on social media. We know that she's like a big Bravo fan. Let's get Rihanna and watch what happens live. And then she also, we know that she ran into Kyle and some of the daughters, of course, not Portia because hashtag wears Portia at Kimo Sabi. We've seen pictures of that. So I love that Rihanna's like in it and she gets it. And meanwhile, have you noticed that minus me talking about it today, we haven't really seen a lot of Kyle Richards. Like Kyle Richards is kind of off the beaten path. Have you guys seen anything? I know that she did that Kelly Ripa um, podcast that came out, I think last week where she said it was inhumane of her cast members to be talking about her or asking questions about her marriage. That feels a little bit of a stretch, but it's been nice. It's been kind of nice um, to get a little bit of a break, to get a little bit of a break from the Kyle Richards craziness. Um, so I promise you all stop right there. I'm not going to get more into it. Josh is seeing Morgan Wade in concert next week. You're going to have to let us know if you see Kyle there. I feel like she's on tour with her. Although, where is Portia? Listen. Portia's still, still in high school. We know she had summer reading, okay? I hope she's okay. So, so many DMs about this next story. This is a big one for you guys. All of you in the Jeff Lewis Live world, universe, are interested in this. Chef Stu, um, Stuart O'Keefe, who is not only a chef, he's also a co-author of the Housewives Cookbook with Amy Phillips. He's also been on a variety of like random reality shows and famously the ex-boyfriend of Jeff Lewis. And I say famously is because that's how I found him. I don't know about you guys. Now, we also know that Chef Stu used to date Andy Cohen. So there is a little bit of like going from one of them to another type of vibe, but I saw an article that you guys sent me and a lot of people are talking about this and it's on Daily Mail and it basically says that Chef Stew is dating Matt Rogers. Now, for those of you guys that know who Matt Rogers is or don't know who Matt Rogers is, he's a comedian. He is a personality. He has a podcast called Las Culturistas with Bo and Yang. He's also been on a bunch of different like you know, shows and stuff. He's definitely been on, um, what's it called? Um, watch what happens live. He's been written about in Andy Cohen's book. He's a good looking guy. 
Okay, this is a good looking guy. For those of you that don't know, let me do a little screen share. But apparently, according to this article on Daily Mail, he is, this is Matt Rogers. And then this is Chef Stew next to Jeff Lewis at the Hollywood House Live premiere. We all know how that went. Ain't, didn't go so good. But Chef Stew is apparently hanging out and hooking up with Matt Rogers. Um, apparently, according to this article, it says they've only gone on two dates, so it's new, but they're all over each other, said a source. However, that hasn't stopped Stu from gushing about Matt to anybody who will listen. He really likes Matt so far, and he's excited about where this could lead after all the drama in his last relationship. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, you know I'm friends with Stu, and I'm, I, like, I like Stu, so I'm not sitting here to talk shit. But I find this whole thing very interesting. You want to know why? Who wrote this article? Oh, it looks like it's Jock Peterson. So Jock Peterson, if you guys know who he is, he has a podcast, right? Jock Peterson has a podcast that Brandy and Julie were just on last week. Now, Brandy and Julie are in with Heather McDonald and are against Jeff Lewis. And so is Stu now. Now, Stu is against Heather McDonald, I mean, against Jeff Lewis and friends with, um, you know, Brandy and Julie and Jack and all of them. So is there a world where, you know, this was very intentionally leaked? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm not thinking like that out of the box though, right? I think Stu and Jack are friendly. Now, Matt Rogers, the whole interesting thing here is that he did appear on Jeff Lewis Live a couple times. The last episode I believe that he was on was maybe in July or June of last year. This is real. Um, this was a really weird episode. Jeff, you know, sometimes Jeff gets like a little obsessive in his interview style and he just keeps kind of pounding, i.e. the conversation he had with Shannon Bedore about her dr drunk driving incident. And if you guys remember, this was an episode when Matt Rogers opened up about how his co-host, Bowen Yang, was taking a leave from their podcast for, gosh, I can't remember what it was called. I can't remember. Was it like a, um, like disassociation or something? It was a word that was kind of like out there, right? It was giving like, you know, a new term. It was a mental health, definitely, but I can't remember. There was a very specific thing that he was struggling with. So he was taking leave of absence. And Jeff was obsessed over it. Like he kept asking questions. And it did get a little awkward. I felt like Matt was not finding it very funny, et cetera. Now, a couple months after that, Jeff Lewis comes on the air and he talked really badly about his ex-producer slash friend, Jen Green. If you guys are Jeff Lewis Live listeners, you know this story. Jen Green was um, a producer on Hollywood House Lift in addition to some other things. And after they had this public falling out, all of a sudden, um, after this public falling out, all of a sudden, Matt Rogers, I think, stopped following Jeff Lewis on Instagram and never showed back up on the show. So I think that Matt and Jeff's relationship is severed, probably for a variety of reasons. So I don't think it's that weird if Stu is dating Matt because it's not like Matt and Jeff are good friends. That would be weird. Um, that would be like breaking bro code. But I don't think Matt owes anything to Jeff. And I do think this, if if anything, is just going to like irk Jeff a little bit longer and a little bit more. Now, Jen Helen said, did you hear Jeff talk about the article on Jeff Lewis Live? He went hard on Stu. I don't, um, I didn't listen to the, today's episode yet. I don't know if I will, but if I do listen to it, I can give you guys more of a specific, but I did see someone say on a Facebook group, something that, yes, he said, um, I'm sure Matt will learn about Stu's lying ways in just a, um, you know, in just a little bit, I would warn Matt, but he and I are not friends. Um, Something about the fact that they probably couldn't get into the restaurants unless they knew the owner or something like that. I mean, listen, it was a dig. Obviously, it's going to be a dig. Jeff, he also mentioned, mentioned something along the lines of like, um, ooh, Andrew, tell me more about this. Andrew says, Matt said on a live Sunday, like an Instagram live, that he'll never talk to Jeff again. Wow. 
very interesting. Very interesting. Um, so Billy says, why can Jeff talk about Stu and Stu can't talk? Oh, no. I think he totally can talk. Why shouldn't he? I just think he leaked this article. Like, I think he told his buddy, I'm hanging out with Matt Rogers. I could be wrong. Oh, why can't he talk about their relationship? Maybe there's an NDA situation, if that's what you're asking. But here's the thing. Like, we've learned about NDAs. When you're in an NDA situation, you can't talk about anything that transpired during your working relationship or during the time that this NDA kind of took place. But you can talk about things after the fact until you're blue in the face. Like, he could talk about anything now. He can't go back and say, during our relationship, A, B, C, D, and E, F happened. But he can say, you know, he can like stand up for himself now and say, hey, I heard Jeff said this on the radio and da, 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 da. So anyway, we'll have to, we'll have to hear more about that and see how that transpires. Either way, I mean, listen, Stu is a hottie. Stu is hot. Matt Rogers is hot. Jeff is hot. I mean, it's a bunch of hot men running around. Just all these hot men. Jeez. The gay community, man. You guys are filled with hotties. So many of you. Um, interesting. I, I would love to know a little bit more about, uh, you know, my dog is barking like crazy. I'm like, who's at my front door? Um, I would be interested to know a little bit more about that relationship and like power to them power to them. Okay. So, um, anything else? Did you guys see the newest article about Tori Spelling's marriage to Dean? I can't, I can't, I talked about this. I cannot get enough of this podcast. Okay. I can't get enough of this podcast, but there was an article that I even screenshot and wrote a TikTok or did a TikTok about it yesterday because I'm in so much shock that this is actual real life. And this is what it says. Tori Spelling can't poop alone. She needed her ex, Dean McDermott, in the bathroom with her. No, nope, this is not a joke. Can we talk about that for a second? I don't want to talk about it. Like, get yourself a squatty potty. Maybe, you know, get on a phone a friend. Watch a TikTok. Watch me. Let's not need our husbands in the room while you're defecating. I can't. I can't be even close. So there's a lot of couples that love to talk about this bathroom talk that they like need each other in the room and stuff. I've heard this so many times with reality stars and celebrities. I'm like, ew, gross, bye, get out. I can't. I can't. Andrew says I was done with the pig. I, I was done with the pig pee. Oh yeah. Between the story that the pig slept in the bed so Dean couldn't sleep in the bed and Dean peed and <laughs> Dean peed and the pig peed in the bed and then the dog poop all over the clothes and the floor. And then now we have this story. Like I, we need to, we need to get an exterminator into the spelling household. We need to do a big spray down, lice all that shit up. And here's my little, my biggest problem about this whole thing is that part of the reason that Tori Spelling says that her relationship with Dean was so such a struggle is because so many paparazzi and people would write these horrible articles about her and just say everything or anything about their marriage. And her kids would have to deal with this now, right? They would go to school and people would say, oh, I heard stories about this. I heard stories about that. And meanwhile, mom, mama five is going on her own microphone and opening the door to the most like disgusting conversations and the most personal conversations about the inner workings of her relationship with Dean. Can you imagine hearing on your mom's podcast that your mom wanted to, you know, she calls it like an 18 miserable year marriage? to your dad. There's certain things that I'm like, wait, I don't get it. So you're saying that this entire thing was to protect your kids. You stayed with him to protect your kids because you didn't want them to, you know, be, and then now you're just airing it all. Oh, I can't, I can't get enough of that podcast. Guys, when it's not about you, it's really enjoyable to listen to. It is unreal. It just feels like a smelly household. That's all I'm saying. It just equals smell. Anyway, according to Ra uh, Ray, Lala is re revealing the gender of her baby on an Amazon Live at 3 p.m. Eastern. 
I hope she has a little boy. I think that would be really cute. But honestly, I don't care. <laughs> That's just the truth. I just don't. I mean, good for her. She needs she needs some good press around her. We just know that the baby's name is S. Do you think it's Sandy? <laughs> Schwartz and Sandy. What if it's Schwartz? Anyway, you guys, I love episodes like today because we had nothing to talk about and yet we talked all about it. <laughs> like we literally, uh, <laughs> Mark says she'll also be delivering her baby on Amazon Live. So will Kyle Richards. Kyle Richards is going to announce her relationship with Morgan Wade on Amazon Live. Amazon Live is getting all the scoop. Who knew Amazon Live was the new TMZ? So good. Um, oh my God. Emily says Donna stay on until she reveals. That means I have to stay here for nine more minutes just talking about complete nothing. Well, I guess I can talk a little bit about Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Are we watching that, by the way? Are we watching Summer House Martha's Vineyard? You guys let me know. I have to be 100% honest. It's it's not keeping my attention that much. I like the end of season one. I got into it. Now season two, I think we're two or three episodes in and I'm kind of like, okay, I'll watch it. It's good, but it's not like, oh my God, good. Now tell me if you guys think I'm missing something. Um, like Laura says, it is a slow burn. It's a bunch of very good looking, beautiful people in a very good looking, beautiful place, which I love. And they're there for 15 days and they have nothing to do except get absolutely wasted shit house from morning till night. It's giving all the makings of good TV. It's kind of got like a winter house vibe for that reason because on winter house, they go for like a very short amount of time. So they just go balls to the wall every time they're there. Um, some of the characters or some of the people on the show I find are a little bit boring and kind of just like filler. Like I don't really find, I know that she's the lead and I know the show is based around her and her husband who is not even on the show season two because he he got, um, he's he's in, he got, uh, oh my gosh, what's it called? He has to go fight in the army. He's serving. Um, but Jasmine to me is such boring TV. Now we also know that she's also deployed. Thank you. I knew it was a D word. Jeez, my brain farting. Um, she, we also know she's sober in this epi in this season. I don't think that that's why she's boring. I kind of found her boring season one. I thought the storyline with her and her husband was kind of interesting because they had a weird dynamic, like a super weird, he was a very, it was a very 1950s. She had to make him breakfast and like iron his clothes relationship. But she season two, now we know she's pregnant in real life. So obviously she's not drinking during the summer because she didn't want, um, she didn't want the cast to know. I would imagine she knew she was pregnant at that time, but it is kind of, it's just like, she's boring to me. There's a character, Alex, on the show who's kind of boring to me. It's just boring. So I'm hoping it gets a little bit better because I really crave these younger shows. I want better, you know, shows. Laura says they always lose the dog. They always, they have one dog in this house and this dog poops everywhere. And by the way, I have a very small dog. Half the reason why I'm still in my sports bra, you guys are wondering what I'm wearing. One of you said like, oh, what shirt do you wear? It's my sports bra. And the reason is because I didn't have a time to change because my dog needed an emergency bath, like not an emergency Patreon. I know a lot of you guys love, you know, the emergency Patreon. We had an emergency bath. And that's because my dog had an accident. But I'm not here. I'm not Tori Spelling, okay? I clean that ish up immediately. Immediately. <laughs> Michelle says our, we're wearing our senior socks and watching the youth on TV. Yes, that's us with our compression socks, drmotionsocks.com, watching these young kids just get completely trashed and like shake their naked butt in front of each other. Um, okay, so <laughs> with a gusseted crotch. All right. Anyway, we will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop off here. We're gonna all watch Lala announce that she's having a boy or a girl. You guys. I have, I have huge news. Lala is having a boy or a girl. It's going to happen 50-50. Um, thank you so much for being here. We had a normal episode today. Yesterday felt so quiet and sad, that damn eclipse. But today we're back. We're back on fire. We are back on fire. Um, join the Facebook 
group, Daily Dose of Donna on Facebook. If you are on the Patreon community and you're in the upper tier, we are having a happy hour on Friday night, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern for one hour. Bring your wine, bring your Gatorade, bring your Frosé, bring your water, bring coffee, bring whatever you want. And let's talk tea. Okay, let's get into all of it. I will um, talk to you guys later. I'll talk to you later. Bye.